outcomes of all types. I work on those issues every day. I go to Washington, D.C., and I lobby and I advocate over 65 offices of the House and Senate, specifically the Judiciary Committee, to try to move forward in legislation so that we don't have public figures begging for private money. I also have been a big brother for 35 years. I worked in Africa as a self-funded volunteer, developing uh, community uh, uh, employment and the library and scholarship programs. I hope to get your vote. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Matt Kokonen. I was born in Finland. Unfortunately, my father died when I was 13 years of age, and so I dragged my mother to the U.S. Embassy because I told her, I want to go to America. I got my papers, filled them out. It took me three years, after which I got my visa. When I got it, I left Finland, left my family, left everybody there, landed in New York by myself with one suitcase. And I'm here tonight to tell you that tonight I have two suitcases, only in America. I went to Westmont College, met my wife there. We've been married 48 years. We have two children and two lovely grandchildren. The reason I'm running for Congress is because of the, my grandchildren. They have definite problems that they're facing. We have, for example, a $19 trillion debt. As a financial planner, which I've been for the last 45 years, I understand the significance of that. And I'm going there to make sure that we get rid of that immoral debt. Go to mattforcongress.com for more information about me. Thank you. I'm Benjamin Lucas. I'm a design consultant from Montecito. Recently, my latest project in Santa Barbara was moving the two historical homes from the Cancer Center on Pueblo to Figueroa. You might have catch, caught that on the news. Uh, while the other candidates were bombarding the air with... Um, just tons of advertising. I've been hitting the internet. I've received over 250,000 views, 1,400 media reviews on a package I created called The Solution. So if you're out there watching, go to the lucassolution.com. I've answered most of the questions that they probably will ask tonight, and it will give you a nice bullet point points to follow along with while you're watching the debate tonight. I hope you go there, and if you want to know about me personally, just Google Benjamin Lucas. So many people have dug up our information on the internet. It just pops up everywhere. So just go there, enjoy the evening, and I thank you for your time, and I hope I can get your vote this evening. Okay, thank you, candidates. And now we have a few questions, starting with Melissa Mahan from KCOI 12. Melissa. Hello, candidates. My question tonight is for Helene Schneider, Kacho Ashajian, Salud Carbajal, and Justin Fareed. House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi said this week that the Republican congressional investigation of Planned Parenthood is, quote, McCarthyism and is endangering the lives of medical professionals who provide abortion services. Would you vote to continue the investigation and why or why not? Mayor Schneider. This war on Planned Parenthood and on women in general has to stop in Congress. The issues related to why this is even at Congress stemmed from it, from a doctored video that actually has gotten, uh, there's been indictments against the people who put it together. Planned Parenthood does more in this country to help women and families with unintended pregnancies, reducing them, with birth control screening, with sexual transmitted infection screening, education. We need to do everything we can to make sure that women and families have access to safe, affordable reproductive health care without undue government intrusion. I think that what's happening in Congress with this uh, attack on Planned Parenthood around the country incites violence, which is unnecessary and abhorrent, and also it's creating a, a detractor from what the real issues are. We need education. We need access to health care. I've worked there for 11 years, and this will be a strong issue for me in Congress. Assembly Thank you. I do support uh, continuing this investigation, simply because when that video became pub public, there were some red flags. She was raised to red flags. Mm -hmm. Any investigation shouldn't scare anybody. If you have nothing to hide, so be it. So they might come out with flying colors and gain the public respect. But if there is something that's done against their mission, then obviously some some conditions should be taken against them. I do support that. They do take care of early diagnostic, early pregnancy, uh, cancer, things of that nature, which is very good use. For, for women around us, but if they're selling uh, parts of the little babies, if that's the case, then that's totally unacceptable. I absolutely disagree that any investigation should continue. It's a waste of dollars. 
it's a sham, and it is a war on women. It's a war on uh, on trying to undermine women's reproductive uh, rights, uh, undermining women's access to health care. Uh, Planned Parenthood provides many health care services, and I think it's been a really unfortunate um, attempt by members of Congress who want to undermine um, women's sovereignty over their own bodies. It's just unfortunate, it's a sham, and it's a waste of money. Mr. Free. I don't believe that this investigation is an attack on women by any means. I think a lot of American citizens had a lot of concerns about what was brought forward with those videotapes. And I think people want transparency. Unfortunately, this is an issue that's so highly politicized that to find the truth of what's actually happening is so difficult to find. So it's necessary that we have an investigation to bring transparency, to understand what happened or what didn't happen so that we can move forward together as a country and ensure that where we're sending taxpayer dollars is a good investment and actually yields a return for taxpayers. That's the bottom line. We got to make sure that it goes goes to good programs and funding, but finding transparency is necessary. And hearing rhetoric from candidates or, or from political insiders on either side of the aisle does not offer solutions. Next, we have a question from Jerry Roberts from CalBuzz.com. Sure. Uh, this question I'm going to direct to the Republican candidates, Mr. Ashaji and Mr. Uh, uh, Freed and Mr. Uh, Coconut. Uh, Donald Trump will be the Republican nominee of your party and uh, therefore the face and the leader of Republicans throughout the election. I want to ask if you agree or disagree with two of his specific proposals. Uh, one, pro prohibiting the immigration of Muslims into the country until further notice and the deporting uh, 11 million immigrants uh, without papers who are now living in the U.S. Mr. Shajan? I don't, I don't agree that uh, we can stop all Muslims coming to the U.S. We have an agreement that to accept refugees, just like a few other countries who have signed that agreement. It's a process that everybody should go through, and uh, the background check, if they're qualified folks to come in, so be it. We need to know where they're coming, what the purpose, and who are here that's supporting them, and will be taking in charge of them. The, the, your second question. Deportation of 11 million immigrants. Who I, don't, I don't think that's that's doable. Uh, it, it doesn't make all that sense. But I'm all for those who have committed a crime, a violation. We know of it after they do pay their dues and spend time, and then I will also forever deporting them. Yes, but only those who have committed a crime with a violation. Mr. Free. First and foremost, the fact that we do not have a functional legal immigration system in this country to this point is case in point that political insiders are going to give empty rhetoric on either side of the issue and I'm convinced that we have insiders in Washington DC that have no intention in solving this problem so when you ask these types of questions Jerry to me that's talking about the symptoms of a problem without addressing the source of the problem Mr. Trump. I believe that we need to secure the borders. We need to have a, a, an improved entry and exit visa system and a well monitoring system so that we know who's coming into our country, how long they're going to be here, how long they're going to stay, and what the purpose of their visit is. No deportations. That is the symptom of the problem. Until we secure the border, having a conversation about either or is not going to treat the problem. We've got to be narrowly focused as representatives in Congress to find a solution to the problem. And that starts with securing the border. Real quickly on the Muslims prohibited. That's part of the entry, exit, and tracking system that exists with, uh, that really doesn't have any place in this current system. So it's necessary that we have that. Okay. Mr. Kokanen? Regarding the comment on Islam, first thing we have to realize that uh, when Mr. Trump said that statement, he wasn't talking about the relig religion. Islam is more than a religion. It is the totalitarian system of economics, of, of social, legal, political, ideology and consequently as a totalitarian system we have an absolute right to keep out those people who are out to kill us and who are out to destroy our western western life um, that's uh, and i agree with that about uh, the uh, immigrants deporting are you calling them illegal immigrants uh, i'm saying that they're here illegally well first of all we have to remember that uh, the, the calling somebody